Hey team, following on from last week's video about state machines, I wanted to give you a classic example of how that can be implemented. And while I was doing it, I realized that there's extra complexity here and I went down a little bit of a side path to discover something quite interesting that I also want to share with you. So what's the key thing that we're going to learn in this video? We're going to learn two things. One, that it's important for your state to be captured in a value that's coming from your database. And two, it doesn't need to be stored data in your database. It can be a computed field or a virtual column. And we're gonna use MySQL's case operator to enable some really complex logic to be simplified. This is a project that I took over called Larida and it's a directory of Laravel engineers. And one of the things that it has is this kind of approval flow, which is overly simplified. And I've added to it, embellished it a little bit more and made it a bit more robust. Um, and there are many states of approval. As you can see here, there are four. So we can have a pending profile. We can have one that's been submitted for approval, and then they can either be rejected or approved. This is an ideal, like small state machine, and we could graph this out and, and have a very nice diagram documenting this. I actually haven't done that in this case, but um, you could probably guess what the state transitions are um, and what the logic should be for most of these cases. The interesting thing is in this situation, actually understanding what the approval status currently is. Now, when you're building a state machine, it can be it doesn't have to be, but it can be very useful to have the state defined by a single value. Often you'll see this as a integer value or an enum like string value in the database. So for example, in our database, we might have an approval status column and the possible values might be approved, rejected, submitted and pending. And that seems fine. Uh, and that's maybe how this would have started if, if it was being done from scratch. But in this case, approval status is a combination of other factors, and I'll go on to explain that in more detail. But for the purposes of what we're going to look at right now, there's no column for approval status because it can't be a column. It needs to be computed. Um, and therein lies some of the, the challenge that we have when it comes to the state machine. Because the state is computed, we need somewhere we can compute that value. And it can't be in the state machine because then it would be self-referential and we'd get infinite loops and that kind of thing. So it has to be outside of the state machine first. This led me to some naming issues and all sorts of other little problems and quirks, which I'll explain which I don't really like and why I wanted to come up with a better solution and have spent quite a bit of time thinking about this. So let's look into the how this actually works in more detail because I think that will help to explain what's going on. You can see this match statement starts off with a method call to get approval status. Now, I don't really like that. I just want it to be something like approval status and that being a value on our model an attribute that's coming from the database but it's get approval status at the moment so let's see what this is doing here this method just feels really really disgusting it's do, like really simple matching based on some logic for the different states i feel like we could remove this very easily if we got a model right as you can see, it's returning the approval status enum uh, cases for each of these other methods. So we've got one method calling another method and returning the uh, enum value that we want, depending on what's happening in this. So let's have a look at some of these. Let's have a look at the simple ones first. Approved and rejected are just based entirely off of date fields. So instead of just having a value that I store in the database, I wanted to keep track of the last date that a thing occurred. When I approve a profile, I want to know the last date that I approved it. And when I reject a profile, I want to know the last date that I rejected it. And by just storing dates instead of some string or numerical value, 
I can actually do a little bit more. The data is inferring more from it than just a, a simple value will allow me to do. And that allows me to do this comparison. So I can say that something is approved. A profile is approved if the approved at date is greater than the rejected at date. Now the rejected at date might be null. In PHP, that's fine. In MySQL, it's a little bit more complicated. Conversely, is rejected if the rejected at date is greater than the approved at date. Seems simple enough. Again, in MySQL, it's a little bit more complicated. The problem starts to appear here when we realize that this only works when we're dealing with one instance. So these state calculations are only running for this instance of this model. That's fine in some cases, but what happens when you want to have a group of models, a collection, and know the state of all of them? Well, that would mean we'd have to iterate through each one and calculate its state in PHP. That's not great, but it gets worse. Whenever we want to do any of this sort of grouping logic, we've got to write queries as well as our um, in-model logic that obey the same rules. So we've effectively got duplicates of the same logic happening in two places, and that's not great either. Keeping the logic in lockstep between the two systems, the, the two parts of the system, is going to become increasingly difficult over time. And it's fraught with danger. So um, there could be situations where it looks like we've got an approved profile when it, on, on one part of the system and the other part of the system doesn't think it's approved, that it's in some other state. That's really messy and I want to avoid that. And then we get to the worst part of it, as you've just seen. The submitted for approval scope has got this enormous query and it's quite complex with nested wares and all sorts. And that's entirely because we don't have a status value field in our rows. So we're computing it on the fly and not even really exposing a value. We're just computing it in the query and assuming the results that we've got, the result set that's been returned obeys the state that we're implying. This is really messy and it's really, really horrible. It's horrible to keep up to date. It's horrible to read. Don't do this. We're going to refactor this out. What's worse then when we add the fact that we've got to keep a query version of this and a PHP version of this, we end up with two blocks of code that are really, really messy, both of them. They're hard to comprehend. And it's just not fun. It's not fun to look at. It's not fun to use. I want to get rid of all of this. And it starts with this first method, the get approval status method. I just don't want to be running this code at all. I want my enum status to be cast automatically by Eloquent as my model comes out of the database. So I've set up a migration that allows us to do this. And you can see that it's a virtual column. And what that means is that every time this table is queried, the values of the approval status will be calculated at runtime, but in MySQL before it hits PHP. So I can get a value back from MySQL as if it was a real column in my table. What's even more exciting about this one is that instead of it just being a simple calculation, it's more complex, but as you'll see, it's not as complex as the logic that I'd got in place before. The reason it's less complex is because we're using the case operator. The MySQL case operator is really powerful. It's kind of like the match operator in PHP. Now, we all love the match operator, don't we? And it makes our lives a lot easier when we've got complex matching logic to do. Instead of having lots of different if statements, we can rely on a single match statement and return the value. The equivalent effectively is either a nested if, which we all know is pretty disgusting, or case, and case is what we want to be reaching for here. 
So what makes the case so much simpler though in, in this case? Well, the, the order of execution of the case statement is what allows this to look and be a lot simpler. Because it approaches it as when it sees the first case, if it evaluates to true, then it doesn't run any of the, the other cases. We can make assumptions about the values of other fields in the following when statements. Let's break this down so we can understand it a little bit better. We're creating this approval status column, but it's a virtual column. And we're saying that we want the virtual column to be based on the following logic. And our logic is this case. So when approved at is the same as updated at, and approved at doesn't equal rejected at in case they happen at the same time, which is theoretically and technically possible. Then we want our status to be approved. But if that doesn't pass, when rejected at equals updated at, then we want our status to be rejected. And if both of those statements aren't true, then when updated at is greater than created at, we want to say submitted. Our status is submitted for approval. And if none of those statements are true, then let's just have the state status being pending. And we end the case and that's it. I want to add an index to that so that we can search on it really easily and we're done. Okay, let's give it a go. PHP Storm has actually got a nice little uh, helper for us here showing us that it's a, a virtual column. Let's open the table and have a look at what this looks like. So with the dummy data that I've got in place, we can see that there's already some approved and some pending. Does this track with the case statement that we created? Let's have a look. Approved at on this one is 0125.54. Rejected at was 0125.50. So approved at is greater than rejected at. Does approved at equal updated at? Yes, it does. So what we can tell from that is that this record was last updated at the same time that it was approved. So it was approved. Now let's go ahead and reject one of these records and see what happens to our column. So number four now should have a rejected app that's the same as the updated app and it will be greater than the approved app. Okay. Let's see what uh, approval status looks like. And it's rejected as we'd expect. So just to confirm, this reject process happens if we have a look at our approved state. It doesn't set approval status. It only sets a few other values. Approval status is being calculated in MySQL. But the difference now is because it's a column in the, the, the table and it's a value that's coming back into Eloquent, we can do all sorts of nice stuff with it. So the first thing we want to do is cast that string value to our approval status enum. Before we set the approval status cast, let's just see what our model looks like without it. So I'm going to go into Tinker again and we'll get the model back. We'll use the same one. So we can see approval status is now an attribute on the model and it's rejected. Let's just check exactly what that value looks like because the summary of the model in Tinker is a serialized version. So if it was another kind of value, it's been serialized down to a string. So I actually just want to see exactly what that specific value is. So let's get it again, but we'll be explicit of the one that we want. Okay, and it's just a string, rejected. Fine, that's what's coming back from the database. 
Now let's see what happens when we add our cast. I think you can anticipate what's coming. That's fine. Thank you, GitHub. We'll do the same again, just so that you can see. Okay, in the model serialized, it still says rejected. Let's have a look at the specific value. And now it's an enum. Great. So now we're actually tying our database result to our enum, which means where we do our match to check what our state is in our approval state method, instead of doing all of that complex logic, we can now just do approval status. And this will continue to work. Right, that's one set of problems. Now we're not doing any of this stuff. I can get rid of this method. And because that's gone, I can get rid of the methods that it depended upon. So let's get rid of those. Now we're just left with the scope methods because these are public methods. At the moment, I just want to refactor these. I don't want to remove them. So how do I refactor them? Well, now that we've got that column, we can use it in queries as well. So instead of having all of this complex query logic, I should just be able to do query where approval status submitted. So I'm using my enum again, which makes it really clear. And it's all tied together. I haven't got any special string values hidden away in this query. And I'm using the column, which I know exists. I can just get rid of all of that. I don't need any of that logic anymore. And I can pl apply this same principle to each of these. In fact, it's even easy for GitHub Copilot to guess what's happening. Perfect. And I'm done. All of that crazy logic has now been refactored away. I haven't broken anything. My database has useful data in it and computed values for what makes sense to be computed with that complex logic, which I can change if I need to at the database layer. My model state is nice and clean. I'm using enums. I'm using a state machine to control when I can transition between those different states. I think it's an important point as to why this approach is so powerful is because it's a virtual column that value can't be updated by the application. It's not stored in MySQL. What that means is that in order to update the state, you have to go through the state machine. And that means whatever the rules are in my state machine about how the state can change are completely under my control. Of course, if somebody knows how to modify the various bits of data in the model that make up that approval status column, they could still get around it. But the reality is, if my system is secure, then they shouldn't be able to change values like approved at or rejected at. They will be controlled entirely by my application. So in practice, it's basically impossible for somebody to manipulate the state of the machine. The main question now is whether this is even really a robust enough solution that you can use for production. I think it is. You should decide for yourself and your team, you know, work together to figure out whether it's right for your application. But there are a couple of considerations. One is performance. The other is change management. For performance, a virtual generated column will be a little bit slower, especially for larger tables. You could change it to a stored generated column and that will make it faster. But obviously the stored data is going to take up some space. So there's trade offs there. The key thing with stored columns, or the question that I often ask myself with that is, well, why don't I just create a normal column, put this logic in my app, and then store it that way? That depends how explicit you want this logic to be as being a part of your application. I think if you've got applications that are potentially editing the same database, then moving the logic to the database layer may save some duplication across systems. Next, we've got change management. A virtual column, well, they're easy to change. You just drop the previous version and create the new version. Whenever the queries are run, 
your data is now going to reflect the expression that you set in the latest version of that column. The problems with change management come for stored columns, where the data is stored and in MySQL's uh, generated columns, it only gets updated when the row gets updated or inserted. So in order to get every row to update, you actually need to update the row. <laughs> the values aren't going to change unless you do something to force MySQL to run your virtual column expression. So if you've got big tables, that could be an expensive operation. Um, it could take a long time. It's definitely going to lead, need a bit more preparation. Say you're using a stored generated column for performance, then your strategy for updating might need to take into consideration that you've got to go through and update a whole bunch of rows uh, in order to get that new expression to update the values in the database. It's not impossible. It's a little bit harder. It's that trade-off between um, querying speed and storage cost. So wherever you land on that has got to be appropriate for your team and your application. For me, for now, in this project, I'm going to continue using a virtual column that's not stored because there's not a lot of data, and I'm happy with this solution. I think it's really good. We've deleted a whole load of code that I really didn't like writing and I definitely didn't like reading. Some of my application logic is definitely speeding up. It's simplified it as well, so it's easier to understand and comprehend what's happening. We've made really strong use of enums, which is great. And on top of all of that, I just feel really good about it. What can I say? Like, this is exciting stuff. My favorite part, though, is the case. The fact that we've been able to use something that we probably don't use all too often in MySQL, and we put it in a virtual column, and it still works, and it's working really well. I'm really happy about that, and I'm looking forward to doing it again. So that's it for this time. Um, thanks for watching. I'd love it if you could like and subscribe, or even share this video with somebody who you think will benefit from it. Of course, if you've got any feedback about the content that I'm making, I'd love to hear it. Tell me whether it's really pants, or whether it's really great, or somewhere in the middle. I'd love to keep on improving, so let me know, and have a great day.